Uh, with that, Ms. Campos, who chairs our subcommittee number five. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As chair of sub five, my goal was to create a budget that was reflective of a real world safety needs that we have throughout the state of California, a plan that provided support for victims, help re reduce recidivism, and help prevent crimes from happening in the first place. Um, I am going to focus on uh, some of the main points of our public safety plan 29 million to the Dependency Council program, 20 million in discretionary fund for the trial courts, seven million to expand uh, interpreter service in, in the courts, um, funding for electronic health record systems throughout the state prison system, 15.2 million to expand the substance use disorder treatment program to all CDCR facilities. Uh, another area that uh, is uh, important is approving the capital layover request as part of the CHP five-year infrastructure plan. And what I would identify as the centerpiece of our work, demonstrating our commitment to helping raise our communities up, is our local public safety plan. And this one is one that um, I have to say that I will give credit to um, the, the committee uh, as we went through and also the individuals that came and gave public testimony. We were hopefully able to address many of the needs uh, of uh, the concerns that came forward, providing $20 million for police departments to increase positive outcomes between city police homeless community persons with mental health needs and high risk youth population 20 million in grants for local governments experience spikes in violent crimes in order to promote safe communities uh, 5 million to reduce the rate of fatal drug overdose and additional 10 million to increase uh, prop 47 2 million for body cameras 5 million um, for bias training um, and additional, and this is another area that uh, I think was um, the centerpiece of where we're moving for California, uh, is putting $50 million in grant funding to provide shelters for homeless and victims of human trafficking, rape, and domestic violence. Plus, we have budgeted an additional $10 million to continue services that address the needs of human trafficking victims. Um, this would mean that shelters across the state of California would not uh, turn away our most vulnerable population and make sure that they have a place to stay. Uh, this is important not only for the Women's Caucus, but also the Select Committee on Girls and Women of Color, who have uh, also made this a priority as I uh, moved across the state of California with my colleagues on that committee to hear the needs that affect girls and women of color in the state of California. I think this is a sound budget uh, regarding public safety in California, and I think it will uh, set the framework as we move forward. I want to thank uh, my colleague, Assemblymember Rodriguez, Assemblymember Holden, Assemblymember Lackey, and Assemblymember Melendez for their commitment to making sure that we moved forward with uh, the best budget we could around public safety. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Campos. Uh, with that, I'd like to open up to questions by the committee members. Any questions? Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Cooper. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, with that, I'm pleased to see the subcommittee approval of the $2 million for the mobile field hospitals. I think this is a great investment for our future of Californians, that we have access to emergency care during a disaster. As I've stated before, we've been lucky that we haven't had a major disaster, but hopefully with the funding for these mobile field hospitals that we can have them strategically placed throughout the state and available if needed. I also just wanted to make a brief comment regarding uh, our jail system and the programs we're having for rehabilitative purposes, which are great. All the programs are, are needed. Uh, but the thing I just wanted to make sure that we look at some of the infrastructure issues that our jails are facing these days. A lot of them were obviously built years ago with the intention of just to house inmates, not really looking at the future as we provide services for them. So if we look for money as well, to address the infrastructure issues that our jails are facing throughout the state. So with that, just make a couple comments on it. Thank you, Chair. So 
sorry, Mr. Cooper, then Mr. Chavez. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have concerns with a portion of sub three report that deals with the Department of Toxic Substances Control, specifically the change from a hazardous waste permit application and related fees. While I support today, while I will support this today, I do look forward to working with the budget chair and others to address this application fee issue as the budget bill moves forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chavez. Well, I would just start off with a statement on a little disappointing in the sense that in education, we are unable to support the governor's proposal of $20 million for charter schools. I thought that was something that was needed and hopefully we'll be able to revisit that in the future. That being put aside, I would just like to thank uh, uh, the chair of sub two on what I thought was a great set of hearings. I think he highlighted a lot of the points that really are important. LCF, paying down the debt, after school, support teachers, adult education, enrollment growth, summer school. There were a lot of great things that came out of the sub two and I'm really proud to be part of that. Uh, there are three items that were not highlighted that I'd like to highlight. One is the veterans transitions at the community colleges, the $15 million that was put in there. Uh, that was something uh, some of Irwin and I have been working on. I'm happy to see that happening. Early education, uh, we talked earlier about increasing rates and access, but also we had funding for quality. As you know, this is not daycare. This is early cognitive development, so I think the important quality piece is extremely important, and I'm glad that we did that. And the other important thing we did in the sub two was the continuing the CTE at the community colleges. So um, beyond that little issue that I mentioned earlier on the charters, I would have to give us an, an A, strong A on sub two and happy to be part of that. So thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Chavez. Uh, Mr. Olberolti. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I had a couple questions for Ms. Campos. Uh, first question is that the governor's proposal had included language that would move four vacant judgeships from uh, uh, over-resourced counties to under-resourced counties. And the reason why this is something that's very uh, I'm very passionate about is that I represent one of those under-resourced counties. And when I started my career in public service, I had five courthouses in my district. And a year ago, I had one. And right now, I have two. And the reason why I only have two, we have the courthouses are still there, the lights are on, but uh, we don't have any judgeships. So I'm wondering why that was written out of the governor's uh, proposal. Thank you for the question. And we did not um, address this issue because they were removing, uh, as the chair, um, two judges from my particular area and from um, Alameda as well. So this is uh, an issue that will be going to conference to, so that for it to be addressed there. All right, uh, I appreciate that. It's these these are vacancies, obviously, and right. I, I hope we get, we're considerate so, of the fact that my constituents in Needles right now have to drive three and a half hours to to get to court. You know, which I, I think is a travesty. So the discussion we're hoping to have is that we shouldn't have to sacrifice one particular part of uh, California for another and hopefully we can um, convince the governor that we need to move forward regardless of uh, uh, of where to move forward and not take away from other jurisdictions but if these are real needs that we need to move forward in addressing this and making sure that uh, your county and other counties get their fair um, share of uh, positions all right, I appreciate that. I, I was just going to add, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, that uh, this is something that we've obviously been discussing since uh, I've been up here and uh, over the last four years, and it con continues to remain a concern. Uh, we, I think we've worked hard to add money back to the judicial system as much as we can within the confines of the budget, and that's something that we'll continue to do, fr frankly, for all our constituents. I think everybody, every single one of our constituents is feeling that pain. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the second question is regarding the County of San Bernardino's request for uh, disaster assistance regarding the uh, December 2nd terrorist attack there. There's, uh, we're still working through the issue of how much of the expenses that the county uh, had to undergo are uh, eligible for reimbursement, but they had specifically submitted a request that was denied to the subcommittee. And I'm wondering if you can uh, tell us a little bit about why that was denied. Um, my my staff met with uh, the the individuals on that request, 
and it was um, it was denied, but there are still discussions on moving forward. We have pots of money um, to be able to still address that concern, but at this point it was denied for the purpose and we'll be moving forward to look at what pots we can, the special pots out of the um, area that is under the, the um, local plan that we put together. So we'll be, we'll be looking at if we can pull money out of that particular pat, um, pot. I talked about um, that we worked on a local uh, plan and I addressed that. So we're looking at whether we can pull money out of that to address the reimbursement for San Bernardino. Oh, thank you. I, I know that they would really appreciate that because I think it's clear that it's, it's an extraordinary circumstance that led to those expenditures. Yeah, and we want to figure out how we can address that through the local plan. And, and given your opening comments, Mr. Vice Chair, as you know, we have um, had numerous requests. Um, I guess you called our budget fiscally irresponsible, so we had to um, uh, turn down the majority of the requests from members, from constituents, from areas. Uh, we tried to do our best to balance everybody's requests given the confines of our uh, budget, but as you mentioned in your concerns about the fiscal irresponsibility, we wanted to make sure that we obviously didn't have room for everybody's um, items. Certainly. And uh, lastly, just a brief comment to Mr. Thurman. Uh, I really appreciate your uh, your attention paid to the Denical issue, and uh, it's, you know, it's talking about fiscally responsible spending, I think that's a perfect example of uh, where we can take a fix it first approach and rather than committing the state to on new uh, recurring sources of spending uh, to instead fix the programs that implement promises we've already made to California's people. And so I really appreciate your attention to this and appreciate your uh, effort to hold hearings. I'd like to suggest, however, that we address this during the conference process because I think it's a, a dire problem that needs to be fixed this year. I don't think it can wait. If I could, through the chair, uh, I'd like to thank the vice chair for his interest, and certainly um, we welcome you into the conversation. Uh, as you know, um, the proposal that was lifted up came to us very late in the process after all the subcommittees had already convened their work, but recognizing that this is an issue that's important uh, to all Californians, wherever they might live, We've been giving it rigorous discussion, working with those who are interested in this conversation, and we expect that there will be ongoing conversations, um, really now and ongoing. And we welcome uh, your involvement. And I would just say that um, uh, Sub One, uh, like all of the subcommittees, has incredible staff who have been very creative in helping us identify ways to address challenges that are bigger than what we might be able to do today, but to help us identify a pathway for moving forward. and. Um, you know them because you've sat in with us. They're and Andrea Margolis, Jasmine Hicks, and Nicole Vasquez. They're very innovative, and uh, together we're all working to figure out how we can address the issue and the needs of Denical going forward. Right. And we welcome your participation. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Williams, and then uh, Mr. Chu. Well, I think it's not, it's not a surprise to, to folks or news to folks that, that um, I have an interest in higher education, um, though not on the subcommittee. Uh, I want to first uh, thank uh, Mr. McCarty and the chair that though we have uh, jostled over how to achieve um, greater uh, re resident enrollment, greater enrollment of California students, we share that um, end in mind, and uh, I know that that you and the UC will still be talking. I appreciate that you have put money on the table, which is necessary to achieve uh, in-state enrollment. And I would just ask that the UC, uh, uh, you know, uh, stretch their ability. Um, we don't completely know the elasticity of demand of non-resident enrollment, but we should try to uh, push it as far as we can so that we can enroll more in-state students. Um, and so I, I hope the conversations will continue and that we will uh, cooperate and um, collaborate together uh, to see how, how we can achieve greater in-state enrollment of students at the UC. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, Mr. Chu. 
I just want to take a moment and thank uh, this committee for their consideration around affordable housing. Uh, the $650 million one-time ask, uh, in the context of the challenges we have, I think everyone in every district is aware of the affordable housing crisis we've experienced. Uh, we all know that uh, since the Great Recession, we've lost about $1.7 billion a year, every single year, and uh, I think this is an important one-time investment in that regard. I also want to thank every member of this committee uh, for the unanimous bipartisan support last year of our affordable housing tax credit, uh, which unfortunately was vetoed uh, by Governor Brown with a veto message that said that he and the administration wanted to see a prioritization in the budget process around housing, and that is exactly what we're doing today. So I want to thank our budget chair. I want to thank the subcommittee, uh, number four, Mr. Nazarian, for his work, our speaker, uh, as well as Mr. Thurman and our affordable housing working group for, for moving this forward. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in this area, but I think this is a, a good step forward. Ms. Kim and then Mr. Harper. Thank you very much. Um, I had a few questions I wanted to ask, but uh, prior members have raised them. So instead of uh, asking them, I'll just make a point on that. But I do want to start out by thanking our uh, subcommittee two chair and the members that I had the privilege of working with this year. Uh, for, I, again, out of the five subcommittees, I take great pride and a uh, lot of achievements we accomplished during this uh, session. and. Uh, it's, it's really important that we provide the uh, adequate funding for our uh, educational system, and I believe this uh, budget adequately represents the priorities that we set forward. So I want to thank, the, uh, the, again, the subcommittee chair and the members I had the uh, privilege to work with. Um, just brief note on the, uh, the, the charter school startup grant program. I know we had a uh, robust discussion on this, and Mr. Rocky Chavez uh, also talked about it. So I just wanted to ask uh, if there is any way, since we have both uh, Assembly and the Senate rejected governor's proposal to put in $20 million for the charter school startup grants, if there is any way we can help the governor to get this funding into the final budget. But you don't have to answer that right now. Um, but. Uh, I also, uh, before you get into the chair or the subcommittee or anyone answer that, I just want to really thank uh, the whole committee for uh, working through this uh, budget process because I personally see there are a lot of priorities that was important for my district and I, I'm glad to see that. And first of all, in subcommittee number one, um, I was really happy to uh, work very closely with uh, my colleague, Mr. Rodriguez, in terms of trying to get the $2 million general fund ongoing expenses to ensure that mobile field hospitals are adequately upgraded and uh, ready for deployment if and when our emergencies do occur. And so I'm glad, really glad to see that that was included. Uh, in subcommittee five in the Public Safety Committee, I would like to thank the chair, uh, Nora Compass for uh, the two of the uh, many items that you guys approved include some of the priorities that is very important for me and my district, and that was to include the additional uh, four, 14 million uh, funding for homeless youth exploitation services program. So I would like to thank the committee for doing that. And uh, early on from this very early on process, I wanted to make sure there was a, a backfill funding to uh, support the uh, cost uh, for uh, adequately training our law enforcement officers um, who have to deal with individuals with mental illnesses. And I think that $20 million will go a long way to do just that. And I'm, I'm sure not just my district, but uh, law enforcement officers throughout the state of California will really appreciate that thought process that we put into. Um, so some of those are very, very important. But um, again, uh, the other part was the identical uh, issue. I was very disappointed that this was taken out, but uh, I know uh, Chairman Thurman mentioned that you had robust discussion on this issue, uh, but it's my understanding and just watching some of your uh, subcommittee hearings, I don't believe that there was any hearing on this issue and it was not funded after all. So I would like to see this uh, continuing and as our Vice Chair mentioned, if this can be um, discussed in the uh, conference committee and see if we can 
discuss that issue, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so again, coming back to a uh, semi-question <laughs> is uh, how we are going to address the issue of the uh, the $20 million uh, that both Assembly and Senate rejected uh, and the, that Governor proposed for the charter school startup plans? Well, well, first I would just start by stating the obvious that the um, uh, Governor seems to do extraordinarily well in the budget process, and I think you should wish myself and Mr. Olbinolte help. Um, with that stated, uh, the issue will be in conference. I'm sure the, um, the Governor will be raising it, and it will be discussed. Thank you. Mr. Harper. Thank you very much, Chairman Ting. Uh, two uh, concerns that I wanted to raise. Uh, one was the uh, $48 million request to increase funding for the Department of Parks and Recreation under Subcommittee 3. Uh, this request not only confirmed the Department's inability to maintain financial solvency, but also took money from the Department's highly successful off-highway vehicle program of $31 million. Uh, I remain skeptical of the Department of uh, Operations and its ability to be able to address nearly a $2 billion uh, in deferred maintenance in the state park system. Uh, and I'm concerned that this rewards the Department for failing to increase uh, state park revenues uh, and improve operations. Uh, the second concern that I have, and I'd really like for this to be addressed since it's been such a highlight of uh, both the governor and the state legislature, uh, that if transportation funding will not be considered uh, so much in this budget, how do Democrats propose to address the problem? It's been nearly a year since the governor con uh, convened the second or instead the first extraordinary session, and not a single vote has taken place in terms of the policy committee. The Assembly Republicans have proposed a nine-point plan to make transportation a priority, and this plan generates a $4.3 billion in new revenue for transportation infrastructure and acts meaningful policy reforms without raising taxes. And this plan ends the diversion of existing transportation tax revenue for non-transportation purposes and invests a surplus of state revenue in transportation infrastructure and eliminates waste at Caltrans. I'm very concerned that rather than addressing transportation through the budget process, that we're diverting it to this extraordinary session when indeed we can help solve this issue uh, here through our policy committees. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bonta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to take an opportunity to thank you for your leadership, all of the budget uh, sub-chairs as well, subcommittee chairs, and, and all of my colleagues and staff. Obviously, a tremendous amount of work has gone into uh, the assembly budget proposal, and I'm uh, very supportive of the proposal. I think that it represents our values. Of course, we all know that budgets aren't just numbers on a page, but they're reflections of our values and in terms of what we prioritize. And I want to just call out a few items that I'm particularly uh, supportive of and excited about. Uh, one is our investment in early childhood education to make sure that every child has a, a fair start and an early start in life. Um, I'm also thankful for our commitment to uh, repeal the discriminatory maximum family grant and also our, our bold rejection of constructing new prisons in favor of a comprehensive public safety package that reinvests in crime prevention as well as our reentry populations. There's also a number of other wins that may not have uh, hit everyone's radar, but I think are no less important. The bu this budget funds the Early Mental Health Initiative to make sure that we help heal our kids suffering from trauma throughout California. Also, funding of Breakfast After the Bell is a tremendous step forward to help make sure our kids are properly fed and ready to learn in the classroom. We also have a strong proposal to support bonding assistance for minority contractors to provide new opportunities for minority business owners that have historically not been available to them. And uh, we're also committing to our graduate medical education programs, make sure we have enough providers to provide the health care that Californians need. And finally, we have significant funding for California's landmark Medical Marijuana Regulation and Safety Act. So those are some of the, the issues that are particularly important to me um, as part of a broader budget that I think is bold and strong and moves California forward and supports um, Californians throughout the state. So thank you all again, colleagues, for, for your hard work and staff. Um, for your hard work and, and our collective leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonta. Any other questions from the committee? 
questions from the committee. Uh, with that, did Ms. Costa or Mr. Sisney have any uh, comments or feedback? Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Amy Costa with the Department of Finance. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll keep my comments brief. Um, uh, first, I think the administration wants to appreciate the Assembly's proposed budget's uh, focus on a robust reserve. Uh, we've often talked about the fact that we are uh, two years outside of what we consider uh, kind of the historic rates of our economic expansion. Um, making uh, a prudent reserve fund even more essential um, to support uh, some of the programs that have been addressed here uh, and to protect them during an economic downturn. I would like to note, though, that we do have some concern about some of the programs that have been funded in this and the out-year cost pressures that could create um, considering that we do believe we're two years outside of that economic expansion. Um, there are several examples. One of the more notable ones is probably child care, um, with the total package of $536.7 million, uh, 405 of which is general fund. So we would just note that, um, you know, uh, although our projections include an underpinning of economic growth, um, we remain cautious and, uh, and appreciate um, the reserve, but do note fiscal prudence is required. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jason Sisney from the LAO. Uh, we'll just mention that we look forward to working uh, with uh, members and, and your staffs in the coming weeks as we head to conference and, uh, and to the floor. And uh, please feel free to use us uh, as a resource. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the or to adopt the assembly version of the budget. Do I have a motion? Second? Do I have a second? Second? Uh, Mr. McCarty moved, Mr. Nazaria seconds. Madam Secretary, could you please call the roll? Ting. Aye. Ting, aye. Obernolte? No. Obernolte, no. Allen? No. Bigelow? No. Bigelow, no. Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Bonta? Aye. Bonta, aye. Campos? Aye. Campos, aye. Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Travis? No. Travis, no. Cooper? Aye. Cooper, aye. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Grove? Harper? No. Harper, no. Holden? Holden, I. Irwin? Irwin, I. Kim? Lackey? No. Lackey, no. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Kim, no. Uh, McCarty? Aye. McCarty, I. Melendez? Mullen? Aye. Mullen, I. Nazarian? Aye. Nazarian, I. O'Donnell? Patterson? No. Patterson, no. Rodriguez? Rodriguez, I. Thurman. Aye. Thurman, I. Wilk. Williams. Aye. Williams, I. Is uh, Mr. Mr. Anybody want to add on? Yeah, Mr. Patterson was talking to me. I'm a no. Wilk. Mr. Wilk is a no. Wilk, no. Allen. Allen, no. <laughs> Eyes 15, nose 8. Thank you. So motion is adopted. Uh, budget will be moving to conference. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now adjourn the Budget Committee. Thank you very much.